Commissioner Blank. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the Commission approve Coastal Development Permit A-2 SMC-11-021 for the development proposed by the applicant, and I ask for a no vote. Second. Moved by Commissioner Blank and seconded by Commissioner um, Zimmer. Uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, this is really hard for me because I don't think there's a single commissioner up here who hasn't been touched uh, by what we've heard today. Uh, my heart goes out to all the families and not only just the families, as we saw a demonstration of families who are fiercely, fiercely dedicated to improving the quality of their children's lives and want a future for them when their parents are gone. It's a basic need we all have and you have it demonstrated here probably better than anything I've ever seen. And I just want you to say, speaking for me, but I think speaking for every commissioner, there isn't a commissioner on this DS who wouldn't support housing for the developmentally disabled. There's no doubt that that's a worthy project. But it's not the wellness center alone that's in front of this commission. Let me say it again. We're not voting on the wellness center. The developer, the developer decided to pair the wellness center with a business center with 225,000 square feet, with some buildings 40 feet high. I'm glad it was in the applicant's first slide that pointed out that these were two interdependent pieces. Not independent, but it was the applicant who decided to make them interdependent. And it's the applicant who decided and has chose to tie these two projects together. What we have in front of this commission today, not as parents who, whose heart goes out to you, but as commissioners, is a land use decision not whether there's a need for developmental housing. Of course there is. But that's not what's in front of us. That's not what you as developers have put in front of us. That wasn't the choice you gave us. You didn't give us a choice to vote on your wellness center. That's the choice you told these people here. You didn't give us that choice. You bundled them together and put them in front of us as state commissioners having to make a land use decision. And unfortunately for the wellness center, the business center portion of the project is inconsistent with the Coastal Act and more importantly, the LCP. The staff's finding on the project for water supply, wastewater, traffic, public access, hazards, biological resources, and scale are all correct. The staff has been clear and the record is clear. They've been trying to communicate these issues to the developer. The developer has chosen to ignore them. Given how far apart the staff and the developer are, this project as a whole needs to be sent back to the developer. Now, you know, I'm troubled about the development agreement. I'm troubled by the fact that it's not three years until the effective date of this development agreement, which comes after denial and LCP amendments and possibly lawsuits, et cetera, that even the first eight housing units are built. And it's not till five years later after the effective date that the developer even has to build the next 27. And it's not till 10 years after that that you get 55 units. It's a long time. And I have to tell you, not as a commissioner, because this is not how I would, I'm advocating this issue, but just as a parent, I'm a little confused. You decided that the only way to build this development, this wellness center, is through private capital. Given that HUD has Section 811 money, or did for years, that actually fund developers to build pri private housing. I was just confused. Given there at the time, there was state money for this. Clearly not now. I'm confused. This is just as a parent. Given San Jose just got a $4 million grant from an anonymous donor to build lighted ball fields. I'm confused. I just think there was a ton of opportunity here. But in fact, you have decided as a business, as a strategy to tie these together. I hear you, I understand it, it's not how I'm making my decision, but as a concerned parent, given you were all concerned, you're now telling us this is the only possible way to get this done. I just don't understand this. And I just uh, want to also mention that the other troubling thing to me was that the fact that the development agreement, at least the draft agreement, says that regardless of what happens, the county can never, never, regardless of the law, decrease the size, the bulk, its height, etc. Once we're here, we're here. So for me, this is not about denying a wellness center. As I said, you've got to be crazy not to feel and to believe 
that one's needed. This is a, my vote is not about no growth. This is about denying a project that fails some of the most basic tests of the Coastal Act and LCP. Now, the staff has said many times, publicly, privately, in writing, just now, that there's a project of a different scale that can be built on the coast. The staff and me as a commissioner is not saying there's no project here. They're saying that this project at its scale doesn't meet the act. And it was Mr. Byers and Mr. Holmes and a number of speakers today share the same desire to work to modify the project. Unfortunately, now at the last minute is not the time to work to, to redesign the project. I hope we deny this application and work with the developer after the denial to get the project to comply with the Coastal Act and the LCP and get the one the center built. So uh, thank you for the time, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Zimmer, would you like to speak to your second? Thank you. Um, Commissioner Blank said it very well. I just want to um, add a couple of, of, of specific points that I've been thinking about throughout this hearing. I really appreciate all of the people who came to testify and like Commissioner Blank, there's no question that this housing is needed and this facility is needed for these uh, young adults. Um, I want to I want to focus on uh, policy 1.18C of the local coastal plan which states that location of new development um, could allow re relatively high densities for affordable housing in areas where public facilities and services are or will be adequate and where coastal resources will not be endangered. And this phrase where public uh, facilities and services are or will be adequate um, is key to me and I really wish that the applicant and the supporters um, of the project had spent a little more time trying to um, persuade us that that can occur because the staff report and the testimony from the um, sanitary district uh, were quite convincing that for a development of this size there is no way that the wastewater uh, treatment capacity exists, that there is continuing risk of um, uh, spills of wastewater and you know I think one of the speakers invited us to be visionary and forward-looking and in the context of land use decision-making there's nothing more critical than being concerned about approving a project that may not have water and that may uh, result in or exacerbate sewage spills um, those are very basic land use concerns and I feel that in the emotion of the advocacy, what we're really being asked to do is upend our basic standards to allow this beneficial project to occur. Um, I agree with Commissioner Blank that if this were simply the housing project, which is why I asked the question in the ex parte that I had with Ms. Roberts about what would the water <laughs> requirement be if it was just the housing project and what would the um, wastewater flows be and and they're as Commissioner Blank indicated significantly less so we have much less of a problem if we're only considering a wellness center um, the other point of concern for me was this this notion of interdependency and the assertion that the only way that this can be economically feasible at this location is to combine it with this rather mammoth um, commercial office development um, I don't know why you need, if they're going to be interdependent, if there were to be any kind of office component to this to help that happen, uh, even at a reduced scale, I'd, and the proposal is that these um, develop me, developmentally disabled persons would have employment opportunities at the office complex and so forth, I don't know why you need to subdivide two, two lots to 13 because in my experience, when you subdivide lots, you're subdividing them for purposes of sale, lease, or financing. So um, if you want to have some sort of combined lower, lesser scale, less impactful facility, um, I don't see why you can't do it on two lots. So those are my comments. I also think there is a wellness center that can be approved at this location, but um, 
we cannot be asked to defer our analysis and the conditions that we think are appropriate to impose until after an approval. That is also backwards in terms of land use approvals. So I'm sorry, but I can't support the project in its present form. Thank you. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. In 1981, the legislator repealed the Commission's statutory authority to protect and provide affordable housing in the coastal zone. That was back in 1981. This is unquestionably a laudable idea. However, our purview does not include which or what income type of housing is appropriate or acceptable. We deal solely with land use issues and whether they are consistent with the local coastal plan and coastal act policies of protection of coastal resources. Public access is public access to all. And I believe that we, each one of us, believe that with our whole, whole heart and soul. This project as proposed violates the local coastal plan and coastal act policies. The height, intensity, inconsistency with the surrounding area, lack of appropriate water and sewer facilities, unaddressed tsunami hazards, traffic issues, and impacts to wetlands they're all problems. They're all inconsistent with the Local Coastal Plan and Coastal Act. Um, there's also issues regarding public versus private utility that concerned me. This proposed project is significantly larger in mass and scale than surrounding development and would obstruct views of ridge lines and significant open space areas including Pilar um, Point Marsh and cause significant visual impacts, again inconsistent with the visual resources policies of the L L Local Coastal Plan. Uh, there is, I agree with uh, my fellow commissioners, there is a project that can be built here, but this project, as proposed, is not consistent with the Local Coastal Plan and Coastal Act. With respect to the suggestion that we can somehow design a project within the next 60 days, I have severe concerns about that in light of the sewage overflows, you know, the, the testimony that we had was very convincing that sewage overflows that are already happening that would be increased, the water supply issues, including the ag well issues. The amount of development that would be required to raise it in order to address the tsunami issues. Designing projects is not within our purview. I'm especially concerned that staff has consistently provided comments throughout the entire period of this project, consistently, and staff's input appears to have been ignored. That's especially upsetting to me. So I agree that the a wellness project could be designed, but that is not something that I can do at the dais here. That is something that after this has been denied, if there is a denial, that you will then be able to look at and hopefully really listen to what coastal staff has been telling you all of these years. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Pachko. Yes, um, I concur 100% with my fellow commissioners and what they've said so far. And I think the, the thing that is most upsetting to me is that I, I think ev as Commissioner Blank said, every single one of us want to approve this wellness center, every single one of us. But in my short tenure on this commission, I have never seen a project come to us with this amount of holes in it in terms of your duties to your, your local community, your, your water issues, your um, sewage issues. I mean, all of those things should have been resolved long before they get to us. And I'm not quite sure why that is, and I'm not, I'm not even going to pursue it because there's so many other things that um, just, just are not going not to make it here. Um, and I also feel there's, there's something odd happening where the applicants get up and they say, well, gee, all we need is a 60 days with, with staff, and we can work this out. This is easy. Well, you know, the staff has been talking to you and telling you their their position on this for a very very long time so i just find it somewhat disingenuous that you know all you needed is north 60 more days to chat with them so um i'm very very sorry i really am um but i i can't vote for this project 
Commissioner Stone. Thank you. For me, I think it's a very exciting program that's being presented up here and something that clearly is targeted at filling a, a need on the Central Coast, a need, frankly, throughout the state of California. But what we have before us is a land use decision around a specific project, not the program itself. And as I had met with the project proponents and understood a little bit about where it was in the process, then come to read the staff report and find that a lot of the local components that should have been resolved at a local level weren't. It just seems, as I read this, the staff report, that the project wasn't, shouldn't have even been before us because those issues needed to have been worked out beforehand. And then as you dig in a little bit deeper, and a lot of the, the project and what's, what's, what I thought very compelling and very interesting about the program is that nexus between the housing unit, the wellness center, and the commercial development, providing jobs right there, providing facility for a lot of the, the disabled adults to be able to work there on site. I mean, that's very interesting. But then as you look at the, the nexus between those two in this project, there's, that nexus becomes fairly nebulous. I mean, the fact that the parcel's being subdivided down, that it can be sold off, that the buildings can be sold off, that it can be condominiumized, I think, to me, starts to shake the program and the foundations of that program, uh, leaving me wondering what's really going on in this case, plus the, the time frame that we're potentially looking at. I think the, the, the Wellness Center, and as I'm hearing commissioners, that as a project seems like a very doable project on this site. Uh, I'm, not, I'm a little concerned about the scale. I'm not quite sure how all of this fits in here because we don't really have, and local water providers and local wastewater waste treatment providers haven't come to agreement on this, and the county hasn't really forced that issue. We don't have a complete geologic analysis here. Things that should have been done prior to settle to the county level, prior to coming to us. It almost, it's almost as if we're asked to do, or staff was asked to do the job the county should have been doing in the first place, and that's a problem. Before we're ever going to reach a resolution here, I think this needs to go back to the county, have those issues worked out, have it worked out with the local water provider and the, and the local wastewater provider, uh, then come to us with something that we could then approve and take a look at and make sure that it's consistent under the LCP uh, and under the Coastal Act. So I think that's a direction that sounds like this commission's headed in and makes a lot more sense given the structure and given what our responsibilities are. Thank you. Are we prepared to vote? Commissioner McClure. I, I, I too, um, am troubled with the lack of the water and the sewer issues and being able to have those detailed out and have the um, Regional Water Quality Board have an agreement and understanding with how it's going to process forward. I get why you need to have the um, the commercial space because that w that's what's actually going to underwrite the wellness center that that that's how that's how they can coexist because even with everybody's SSI thrown in together you still need the revenue from the commercial property to keep the doors open and the lights on and the staff at the wellness center so for me I see how the two projects why they're connected and why they have to come together but with the holes and the sewer and water not being in um, a public service um, arena it makes me nervous I think that the um, the idea of the water reclamation as part of the sewer treatment is a great idea but it didn't seem complete in the report. It seemed that there were still holes. Um, and uh, someone said that the commercial area was equivalent to five Walmarts, and I think that that's probably a little bit exaggerated when you look at, this, at the square footage, but I recognize it as large. I would also, if I could ask through staff, I mean through the chair, if I could ask the developer a question. Certainly. Um, and the question is in relationship to the parcels being divvied up. Can you, can, 
Are um, you do, are, did you do that for financial reasons? For well, let me take both parcels one at a time. We, the wellness center is, um, it's tricky financially, and we took. Um, it's really one property, but we have three subdivisions at that location to allow us to sell potentially two commercial buildings on that to help us finance it. I don't know if that's the direction we're going to head, but um, and again and again, it's not an ag well; it has been approved for. No, I, I'm, not, so, I'm just asking but, about the. So that wasn't an issue that seemed to come up. So, whenever you can get a value of that, that's better. The office park. Um, it's subdivided into eight separate buildings, and then the the um, wetlands is a separate one all altogether. But it, it, again, we're looking at um, a condition set of conditions imposed on us by whoever owns these buildings. We don't intend to own them, and it just allows us to build them as the need is there, and that's essentially what the um, uh, the development agreement is. We don't. No one's intending to spec eight large buildings. That may never be de in demand. So one building's built. It's a separate owner. We have a, a series of agreements that require um, us to maintain that, maintain the wetlands and all that stuff. So it gives us a um, financially feasible way to um, proceed forward. And one big building, I have to admit, it probably would never sell. But we're dependent on people that um, financially contribute. One of the things that we have in there is a square footage contribution that's required from each one of the owners as they develop. Excuse Plus me, they, I um, need to ask you to uh, restrict your testimony to the okay. question the commissioner yeah. asked Well, that, that was kind of why we, we subdivided it. But it, the need for that is, um, you know, it's, that's it. We could do it and what we could no, have no subdivisions for that matter. And are there going to be deed restrictions on there that say that yes. the wellness center will always into perpetuity be a wellness center and that these commercial buildings will not become condominiums? Well, condominiums are commercial condominiums. It allows a person to have a small office, still commercial. It doesn't imply residential. It always would be commercial. But it allows you to, say, sell a quarter of a building to somebody who has a small office that wants to buy it. That person would still be a contributor to our system. The, I, the Coastal Commission, well, in, in the past, they've always implied deed restrictions that um, we have to adhere to as a condition. Okay. So Thank you. I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. That's it. Is there any unwillingness to vote? Is there a need for a roll call vote? The maker and the second are. I have one sorry. more question of staff. I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. What are the opportunities now? Is it just that we could do denial? Can the request? Can the um, application be withdrawn and re resubmitted later, or is this the is this the end of the road? Um, this is an appeal, so um, the application, uh, I guess, could be withdrawn, but it were resubmitted, it would be resubmitted at the county level. Um, the commission uh, can have an up or down vote um, according to its wishes, uh, or as the commission knows, it can continue items. Those are, those are the options. We have a motion before us uh, to approve the coastal development permit, and the maker and the seconder are asking for a no vote. Is there a need for a roll call vote? Seeing none, uh, any unwillingness for your unanimous no vote? Seeing none, uh, the motion fails and results in the denial of the permit and the adoptions of findings and resolutions set forth in the staff report. Thank you all very much. It was a, a very tough hearing, a very respectful hearing, and I appreciate everybody's uh, participation. Um, let me look to the commission. Do you want a power on or do you want a 10-minute break? We got a power on vote here. All right.